Alive? Oh. Man down! Alright, we better go get him. Well, he's moving, he's alive. Slush. Look at all this slush, eh? Look at it. It's freezing into big balls of ice. It's huge. So I made it through, and I laid on the coal. He said slush. I turned on the coal and I booted through it. Chris was in his fortune. And as you saw, it took us a whack of time to get our butts out of here. Uh, so you can see, see how deep, how we broke through. And even standing here, you can see how quickly it's coming up and that, so. Well done. Yeah, we gotta bang these suckers together and get them off. <sighs> wow. The slush walkers. Here we go. So I'm gonna clean off the sled here. And I got the other one. We're headed up over here, uh, up into a lake called Mary Jane Lake. That's the start of an epic adventure. 18 kilometers, four days, camping and moving every night, or perhaps maybe we will we'll stop and we'll take a take a break one night. We'll see how we do for time, but. Uh, we gotta clean some slush off and bang it off before it becomes a rock and we're not able to move. See ya. Enjoy. This is gonna be fun. It's a beautiful day. It is. So nice. Now who's that way down at the end of the hill? Where's Chris? Hey, he's got some all the way up the hill. And all the way up over that way. 
not an overly bad portage in the summer, but it's not summer, it's winter. And it's a skidoo trail that goes straight up here. I claim this mountain for Queen Victoria. Very good. We tried to see if there was somewhere we could come in through here. Uh, there's some blow down in there. We, we, we were hopeful. We tried. We dreamed. It wasn't happening. All right. So, not many photos of that. We're just gonna carry on. Try to get her done. Well, yesterday was a really hard day. As you can see, we had we had slush, and then we had uh, three trips across a portage um, that uh, was straight uphill, and then uh, we had another portage after getting through another lake, and uh, then we had a pretty cool night. We had to find wood. By the time we got our wood, it was uh, it was dark out, and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a cool night. Lots of sleep though. We were pretty exhausted. We ate well and we slept. This is where we're camped. Um, camped on a small lake. Uh, there's a little bay in there where we kind of scavenged some wood out of. And uh, the portage came out over in that way. And I'll walk down there and I'll take a shot of it later. As you can find, most of what we found were these small small logs here. Uh, we did find two bigger ones. This was by far the best log that we found. There was about a six inch uh, piece of dry standing cedar. It was super dry, split easy. Um, gave off lots of heat, so it was really good. But we found this spot. We think it's been used before. It's kind of neat. You know, we're up up here. There was uh, a dead fallen log. We were able to guy out to here. Um, there's a little bit of rock over there. There's rock under here. So we're just getting everything packed up here. We're moving on. We're moving on to hopefully Mary Jane Lake. It's uh, There's a snowman trail that meets to it. We'd originally wanted to go through into Ontario and loop back up to Davidson, the lake that we came off of. Uh, after that one portage though, and we don't know what the, the level through it is like uh, We kind of erred on the fact that we don't need to prove that much to ourselves um, And we'll enjoy ourselves a little bit more So we're just gonna move one more lake over and then probably camp the next two nights there um, We'll see so but it's uh, It's Saturday uh, What is it January 16th? I think of 2016 it's about minus 20 it's supposed to go to minus 21 today I wouldn't be surprised if it's about minus 24 25 right now the winds kicked up out of the north so we'll be bundling up pretty good as we head south um, other than that bitter patter we gotta get at her that's little remnants of wood in here all right, time to get this home down. Just getting ready to tackle a portage here. Uh, we got about maybe 100 feet of climb, kind of twists up and around. It's pretty much all the way up, all the way across till you reach the other side and then it's just a great big decline down onto a little lake. And then we'll be on Mary Jane Lake. So, uh, not much, not much of a haul, just kind of, we were camped on this lake down around there and we just pulled it around to here. We walked through and scouted the trail first to see what we were up to. Then we went for a little walk down that way to see if we could find a trail that we could cut, cut through that wasn't so climb, didn't have a climb to it. and uh, It's all too bushy through there, so. We'll just rest up and we'll go haul them over here and uh, 
carry on to Mary Jane Lake. <sighs> Just got one sled up to the top of the hill. You see, out there's where we came in from. We'll take a little walk down here. So you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see very well here, kind of come along through here and then up over there and then it zigs way up over top, up over there. And I'm kind of up over there now. So, but uh, here we are. Somewhat of a straight run, one heavily loaded sled, the end of a big hill. Alright, let's uh, get these ropes in here. We used to do this stuff when we were kids, right? Come on. Not what I'd call an adrenaline rush, but I did it. I'm alive, I didn't end up in a tree. Some of you said for that. All right, here we are, we made it to a swamp. <laughs> dead trees, dead pine, dead pine, dead pine, lots of standing dead stuff. Okay, this is Wood Haven. Wood Heaven? Wood pond, dead wood pond. <sighs> and that's that must be Mary Jane Lake right outside. Yeah. Well, over there. Yep. well let's the start pulling towards it. So uh, we've just gone and scouted out a campsite, and uh, now we're going to haul our sleds in. We've got to go across, up over across the beaver dam. If you look off in the distance there, you can see a little bit beaver dam mound. And we're just kind of off to, in the trees to the uh, the right of that. Uh, there's a lot of dead wood in there, a whole bunch. And uh, I think we got a good little spot picked out. Spooky spruce grouse in there. He ran up in the trees and flew away before I could pull the camera out. But uh, yeah, I think we got a good little spot tucked out of the wind out of the way if the snowmobilers come in here tomorrow or later today to do some running around and uh, we'll be tucked out of the way. Oh, just got back from uh, cutting a bunch of wood and hauling it to the swamp. There's a bunch of it right there. We got nice dead uh, jack pine and whatnot just off the side. Another one here. So we're gonna put our tent up here. And what, uh, and you see it's a, a perfect Little spot with a little opening here, so it'll be nice. But we're well sheltered from the winds. We just got a ring of trees all the way around us. There's a bit of land rises behind us, so we're up a little bit. I think this will be a nice little home for the night. All right. Well, we gotta get the tent up and uh, show you what it looks like when it's all done. But other than that, uh, I think we did three clicks today. We did three yesterday, three today. The first day, the three. Really sucked it out with the slush and the uh, the hill. Today we had another, you know, two portages in it and a beaver dam. But uh, he's trying to haul the behemoth of a sled. Better go give him a hand. How to get star shots. <laughs> so he's going to take a picture every three minutes. Do you want a little heat pack for it or no? No, it's fine. What it'll do? Well, we'll find out, right? Yeah. Your uh, headlamp thing. Doesn't matter. 
Like that. Okay. Got three minutes delay, right? Yeah, we go to the water here. I don't know if any of this is coming through, but uh, out here on the lake, just coming down to pick up some water. And hands are pretty cold. But uh, one thing I always like to do when I come out here, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but give it a try, is uh, if you have a smartphone, and uh, where we are, we have like one bar of cell service, but uh, there's an app you can quite often get. This one's called Night Sky. And uh, this particular one here is, you're not going to be able to see the, the apps probably very well, but let's see if I turn it this way if I can get a good. The red dots obviously from the camera, but if you can sit there and see, you hold it up to the stars, and yeah, right up above me is Orion. I think it's Orion's belt up there. I think that's Orion over there. But, uh, yeah, Orion's right up over there. It's always kind of neat. And of course, you can see the moon. Do you see the moon? There we are. There's the moon. There's the app. There's the moon. It's pretty close. There's right there. Moon, app, moon, app. That's kind of neat, eh? So it's something I usually have taken out with me uh, when I come out and around outside. Uh, I don't know the stars very well, but uh, it kind of helps me figure out what's out here. Especially on these nice clear nights like this. Anyways, it's something we do. My fingers are freezing and I'm out here to melt water. So I'm uh, going to finish up, go back in the tent there. And uh, carry on with uh, with the evening. All right, we'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Sunday. Uh, noticed on the we, we get we actually get cell reception here. The batteries in the electronic thermometers die, but you get cell reception. And uh, the cell reception said that we had uh, extreme wind warning or extreme cold warning uh, for the area has ended. So apparently it's nice now. Uh, it it is very pretty to look at, but there is a slight bit of wind that we can feel. So I think we'll move. We're going to scout to see where, where our outlet uh, go back into one of the lakes there and check and see a trail out if it's a little easier if we have to haul through the way that we came in. Uh, we're about five kilometers, five six kilometers away from the car, so um, we'll go see if there's an easier way to get home. We're tucked up back up in those trees. Can't see us. We're out of the wind. A little uh, clearing, made courtesy of the beavers that live here. But uh, it's beautiful out, but it is cold. This is packed from well, isn't it? Yeah, very well. So we'll catch up with you later, because my hand's getting cold. Oh, listen. Hear it? Okay. Yeah. Still flowing down under there. Flowing at a pretty good pace, too. We're just following a snowmobile trail between one of the other lakes and heading into Mary Jane Lake. Once we get to the other side, we'll have an idea on whether or not this is a good way out for us. It's very pretty through here. Enjoy.
Oh, we can see the water right there. Yeah. Flowing away. Need a drink? Minus 30 something and we still got open water. Not much of it, a little bit more over there. It looks cold though. Yeah. Black and cold. Yeah. Well, if we tried to go that other route, we could end up the same way. Getting a creek like that. It's pretty through here. good walk today. Got the snowshoes around my back because the hitch is kind of being a little funky and that but these are nice and warm. We're doing all right. And we see Dean. Maybe down here is the C50. Most likely. You just want one? No, I'm good, thank you. Sandwich? Lunch time. Sun's coming in. Islands are dry. We're back in the tent. With a visitor for lunch. <laughs> never know who you meet in the forest. Yeah. <laughs> it's pretty neat meeting you guys. Everyone's always happy now because it's electric on so working. Yeah. A little bit of cake. This is pre... What do they call it? Appetizers. Appetizers. A little bit of that. A little bit of Connemara. Should be good. Yummy. And the stove is gone. And we got her up. Very good. So what type of oven is this little guy? This is a Bemco backpacker oven. Bemco backpacker. Yeah, a little light to this subject. There we go. Do not look to the camera. So I haven't had this very long. It seems to work. As long as you can put it together. Trying to do it down here is a really dumb thing to do. It's somewhere level. Yeah. There we go. It'll sort of do oh, this 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 comes through really good here. How much does this thing weigh? Uh, I guess a couple of pounds. I don't know. It's difficult. I haven't weighed it. It's terrible to say. Less than your reflector oven. Yeah, well, my reflector oven, what? It's pretty heavy. And this cooks actually nicer, I think, than the oven. Because you can sit it on top and get the heat rising. So it's, it's designed to work with like a normal backpacking stove mm -hmm. but it seems it works pretty well with a, as long as oh, 
trying to put it up here is really oh. is it held together there? Little... There's just a couple of pins here. So they're pins, do they lock in in any way, shape, or no? They just hold in. Normally when you're using it with a backpack or oven, it comes with a steel diffuser plate which slides in there. Yeah. And once that's in, it's completely locked into place. Oh, okay. The shelves don't do quite as good a job. Right. Of holding it in place. But they seem to work, as long as you're a bit careful. What I need to do is make a... Oh, don't try this at home, folks. We have a cherry right of the stove. Oh, I'm going to pick up the glowing red. Oh. We're going to try and make some cinnamon buns for breakfast. And unlike Sean, I cheat because I bring some dough already made up. Yeah. Because. I love how it pops like that, eh? Yeah, it's exciting, isn't it? So I'm using the lid of my food box as a table because last time I did it, I made a mess. So you got your can of your cream cheese frosting. Very cool. And we've got four large. It's amazing it just blows out that way. Yeah. So it always comes off every time. So we're smelling the cinnamon buns here. We're starting to smell them. The temperature's sitting. So it's not running quite as hot as we had it the other night. Yeah, I don't know. Things upside down. So. Yeah, well, you can read upside down. How did you ever cheat at school if you can't read upside down? Wow, look at that. Ooh. They're looking pretty good. Yeah, they're just good. A little bit more, though. Oh, yeah, they need more, yeah. They'll be nice. Pretty good. That's not bad. They're right down out of the burn zone, around the bee. No. Does that mean you want me to put more wood in? More wood. Except I haven't consumed copious amounts of Sailor Jerry's or something to yell, more wood! There is the wood supply coming down there. What do we figure? About 40 feet of wood is what we chopped up for a oh, day? Oh, at least. Yeah. yeah. There we go, there we did. Some good jack pine. Yeah. Some over there. We got another 20 feet sitting out there if we need it. I'm gonna think that might be done. I'm thinking that looks pretty good. So I think we'll take that out. I think the other ones need a bit longer. Maybe. Oh, this looks a bit bulky now. That was good. That's temperature. 8.22 in the morning. We're up at 6. It's minus 27. Feels like minus 31 out there. And we're heading out today, so we'll get out about minus 21. That's temperatures for the rest of this morning. Brisk would be the way to say. Stove's going. Battery's dying, so it's all looking good. Okay, we just came uh, down this one lake. It is now, we at 11 o'clock, and we just did one kilometer there, so. Uh, we got underway a little bit later, uh, maybe about half an hour, 40 minutes later than what we thought, eh? And about that, but uh, it's not too bad. Following old snowmobile tracks, so 
that's a good thing. It's not too bad, but uh, anytime you're hauling this stuff, it's still, you feel it. But uh, we're just about to head up to Mary Jane. There's Portage. So we went up uh, following the snowmobile trails that way and uh, on our way home. So, what, maybe two hours, two and a half, three hours maybe? We'll see. You know, could be a little more, could be a little less. We'll get there when we get there. All right. There you go. Are you having fun? Has this been epic enough? Oh, epic. Very epic. Epic, epic. It's epic. We didn't do what we did. What we, what we, said, we said we wanted to do 18 in four days. We did six in. We did six yesterday, so that's 12, and we'll probably do another six out today. So we'll still get 18 kilometers in. We just didn't move camp the second night because uh, we didn't think that we'd be able to make it through the whole route. After the first night, how tired we were, uh, being the first time. I don't know, I haven't been out since November. So not hauling sled out. Yeah. yeah. So haven't hauled sled for well this year. It's the first Gosh. time out. So um, you know, moving every night. We'll come back, we'll scout it out, maybe we'll get it next year. Maybe it'll be something we can do in 2017. But uh, it's all good. It's always good to get out. You always gotta get out. And uh, it's been fun. So we'll keep hauling, we'll talk at you later maybe. We better go get him. Well, he's moving, he's alive. Epic trip so far. What the hell we see here? Let's go back. Down to trip. 5.73 kilometers. 118 right now. 4.2 moving average, overall average 2.3. 4.2 moving, cloning freaking sleds. So, that's only a little off my regular hiking pace. That's not bad. The reason for the celebratory stop in the middle of nowhere is these little things here, those little tracks all the way out there, that's our way coming in. We came back from that way following different snowmobile tracks. Anyways, vehicle, put ins right over there. Let me see if I can zoom in. Oh, I forgot. Probably not gonna be able to do this. Let me see. Ah, that's too much zoom. I can see the there. Right there is the road. That's where we go out. And our car is somewhere up over here somewhere. I don't see it, but I'm sure it's there. And hopefully it'll start. So, uh, a little colder than we were expecting, eh? Yeah, the wind is cold. The wind is cold, he says. So, uh, all in all, 
I think the definition of epic, I'm not exactly certain what the definition of epic is, but uh, I think we've, uh, I think we reached epic. Yeah. You? You good? It's been an epic adventure. It was an epic adventure. So we did set out to do 18. What did I say? We did five so far? Yeah. Five and a bit. So we did six. We hiked six yesterday and then five today. So we came close. Uh, you know, about 17, we're 18 kilometers. We did do a loop trip. We learned an awful lot. A uh, couple biggest things I think that we learned were um, in the morning, we got to get our crap together a lot earlier. No surprise for me, I'm not an early morning mover. Um, what else do you say we learned in the morning? Stop duplicating gear, I think, is the biggest. Yeah. And I think, I think even though we both trip a lot and we, we know what we have, but we know what we have. We don't necessarily know the other person. And maybe if we did a group packing, like uh, I did one group trick once and we didn't duplicate gear, and that's because we had a group packing evening uh, a few days before. And that might might eliminate a bit of it because what do we have? We had two complete kitchen sets. Yeah. And, and yet, yeah, you know, uh, so we carried way too many of, of that. Um, and in the morning, we got, uh, we got our rhythm down a little bit more. I think if we were going to do this on a big loop like that, we'd definitely three people and leave the cots. And that. He tried to get me the cots to stay home this time. Instead, I convinced him, so it we brought two. It was comfortable. It was comfy? It was comfy on the cot. Yes. But better if you're going to base camp. If you're going to move, I don't know. If anybody, yeah. I want a carbon fiber cot. Carbon fiber. So if you're out there and you're an inventor, you want to work on it, carbon fiber cot. There you go. For less than a hundred bucks. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that goes along with unicorn fur. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, let's get it done. Yeah. Yeah.